mind over matter. If the pain of where you are never exceeds the pain of change, you will always remain the same through a renewal of the mind. And it takes a process. True transformation. Mind, mind, mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You gotta go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear. Yo, what up everybody? Team Results here, the School of Results, and we in the building. It's Mind Over Matter Mondays, and we about to bring it to you. Hey, Ken, what we got going on today, man? All right, Coach, this is what we're going to do today. What we going to do? So today we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. Oh, just so y'all know out there, it's uh, in the studio here. We have Taylor with us today. Uh -huh. She won't talk a lot, but yeah. Coach and I do more, most of the talking. I just wanted to let y'all know that she was here. How y'all doing? Uh -huh. All right, so we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions and why they don't work. That's good. Why, That's good. why they don't work. That's good. That's good. I mean, the funny thing is, people are always making New Year's resolutions. They're always like, yo, I'm going to lose weight. I'm, I'm going to get out of debt. I mean, what are some other ones that they say? Oh, man, I'm going to stop eating meat. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm going to lose 100 pounds. Right, right. Yeah. right. All, right. That, all that dumb stuff, man. And people, they, they, they by the, the, the second week of February, they fell off. Well, you do know, right, at the gym, Straight up, though, if you go to the gym, like there's big box gyms, and they'll have, I mean, they, you you know because you've been, you worked in one, uh, that the membership increases. And by, I'm telling you, by February the first week, mm -hmm. whereas I couldn't get a parking space, parking lot free, mm -hmm. free and clear. So the question is, why is that? So let's let's, let's kind of go in on it and, and talk about New Year's resolutions. And there are people out there who have made some New Year's resolutions because I'm not going to lie, I've made some. Uh, I'm like, yo, this year I'm going to lose 100, 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I said your joy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I said it, you know. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stack up about 20,000. I've always made them. Uh, I stopped making them two years ago. Yeah. Just two years ago. Well, why? What? What was the change? Um, and, uh, you know. So why? Why did you change? I think I stopped making them because I. I number one, mm -hmm. I started being honest with myself. Okay. I only made the re resolution to make me feel good about this upcoming year, feel good about myself because I didn't do it last year. Okay. Okay. And so if I said it, if I said, "Yo, I'm going to lose this weight," mm -hmm. it didn't. Re what happened was I'm optimistic, hopeful because I realized it took my mind off of. I didn't do it last year. Right. So I stopped making them. So you felt better for the moment. I felt better for the moment. Right. Like many people. You told yourself felt, another lie. I told myself another lie. And you said it enough times so you could believe it until you, until midway through the year, you knew you wasn't going to do it. So now you had to start feeling bad again. I mean, since you put it like that, yeah. yeah that's what, I mean, that's actually what happened, though. And uh, so, I, I, so I made a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I'll never forget it. Two years ago, and I, can I let me tell you what actually happened. So I would always, you know, the years prior, I would always gain about 15, 20 pounds, maybe even 25 pounds during the holidays. A year? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, but I would lose, I would lose it. I mean, I mean, well, wait a minute, you twisted me up right now. Uh, you That's twisted a lot of weight. You twisted me up. That would have uh, put you more than 425 pounds. Look, look, look. Hey, you twisted me up for a minute, man. man. But now I'll gain some weight. Let's say this. Yeah, I'll gain some weight. Everything pounds. got tight. I, listen, I know how it is because of the simple fact that um, from October till now, it's, it's January, man. I gained 10 pounds and I gained 7% body fat. So just over the holidays, you know, that time coming, uh, uh, I, I know how it is. And if I can gain, you know, uh, 10 pounds and 7% body fat in two months, then I know what it takes for people who aren't really as active as I am in the gym. And that's with me working out five and six days a week and sometimes doing cardio early in the morning. That just means, you know, I, I was missing a part of the process and I got a little lazy. But if I could gain that much weight in, in just a few months, then I know how it is for people who aren't really on top of their game. Okay, thank you. I mean, so now, now yeah, Taylor and Lab, so, so, so I feel better now. About the 25 I mean, pounds. You feel a lot lighter. I feel better. You yeah. work out. Yeah. All right, so, so that being the case, though, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to help some people out um, and who've made those resolutions. And let's talk about why they don't work, but then let's talk about how we can help them make them work. 
All right, I think I think one of the major mistakes that 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 people, you know, um, commit when they're trying to get resolutions is, is that they make their goals too broad, they're too big, and there's too many of them. Mm. So, can whichever one you want to touch on first, I mean, we could dive right into it. But you know, just just making a goal too broad, it just means it isn't specific enough. And you always tell us, and you tell you, you know, we, we talk when we do our seminars and we talk about how the mind works in pictures. Right. We have to be specific with the things that we ask ourselves and tell ourselves and the things, the images that we create in our mind. Right. Because once we create that image and we tell ourselves about that, that is what we're going to get. And if it's broad, then we can never hone in on it. That means our mind is going to take us everywhere and that's going to take our actions everywhere. True. And if our actions aren't congruent with the actual goals that we have, then, you know, it's, 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 it's going to take us a long time to get there if we ever get there. Right. And one of the things that people need to keep in mind is, is I'll take one, one of what you said. You said they're too broad enough. They're right. too broad. Right. There are too many of them. Right. Um, and let me, let me, and what was the last one? Too big. Too big. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's break it down. Let, let's use the too big one. Okay. This is a good one right here. Right, right. So well, let's use too big because um, I like to call this the, the snowball effect, the way that I approach goals. And I don't really want to tell people not to set a big goal because I always tell people to set a goal that scares you. And I want it to be really big, you know, this, that, and the third. So I don't want you to think that this is contrary to what you might hear later on down the line in another podcast or another seminar that I might say. But in this sense, having a, a goal that's too big and not approaching it the right way is going to set you up for failure. You right. understand what I'm saying? So you always use the terminology as eat, eating the, the elephant one bite at a time. Right. You know, so, and, and I say the snowball effect. And, you know, I kind of learned this when I was um, reading the book uh, uh, by Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover. Right. And, you know, he, he basically is teaching you how to get debt free, but teaching you how to do it with the smallest debt that you have at a time. And when you when you approach your goals from, from that standpoint where you say, you know what, let me do something small. Instead of saying that I'm going to work out every day of the week and I'm going to lose 70 pounds, how about I just, since I wasn't working out at all for the last six months, let me try to work out at least two times this week. Mm. Let me get to the gym one time this week. Because I wasn't going at all before. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right, so right. when you do something and you actually complete that task, you get a sense of accomplishment. And when you get a sense of accomplishment, you get a sense of confidence, courage, and strength. And that allows you to move and go even more to tackle the next one. So with Dave Ramsey and Total Money Makeover, what he says is, hey, if you got a Victoria's Secret bill and it's only $75, let's knock out the $75 bill first instead of going for the student loan that's $32,000 that you keep looking at every single day because we're going to work our way up for that, to that. And then we can use the, the money that we were throwing at the Victoria's Secret bill and throw it at the next bill. And then now we have two, two bills that we used to allot in our budget. For, we had the money we'd allot in our budget for those two bills. We could take those that two, um, that that money for those two bills, and throw it at the third bill, right. and then eventually you're going to have four bills, four debts that you cleaned up, and you still have that money in your budget that you were throwing for that, and now you can throw four hundred dollars at the thirty-two thousand dollar loan, and then it starts to to get you know you're already paying the hundred eighty-nine right. dollars on it, now you're throwing four hundred on top of that, now you're at five hundred eighty-nine dollars, and you're starting to eat up that chunk of uh, chunk of change because now every month you're you're at a thousand dollars, you know every other month you're at a thousand dollars, and boom, you knock out thirty-two thousand. In, 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 in whatever amount of months. You understand what I'm saying? No, I do. So you just eat the elephant one bite at a time or you use the snowball effect and so it can trickle over and, and build momentum because momentum is one of the greatest forces you know, you know on, on the universe. Yeah, not Big Mo. We call it Big Mo. That's right. another book that we read. All right, right. Yeah. So let me, let, me, let, me, let, let, me, let me go to the... What you just said yeah, yeah, was yeah. perfect. Yeah. So let me tell you why it works. Right. Let's go to the mind part go of it. To go to, go to One of the things that people don't know is part of motivation, people are motivated by achievement. The reason why you do the snowball effect is because it helps you get a win. Right. It helps you achieve right. something. Yeah, cool. And so quick, a quick... quick. That's why anybody... In the fitness industry. Yeah. That's why the program that we've created, the 90 Day Challenge, it helps people get results quickly. Right. Because the quicker the quicker they get results, right. what that does, it fuels the motivation. Right. I'm going to give you um, what you just said was powerful because I'm going to give you a real world example. I remember when I went on the show, The Biggest Loser. Yeah. And I remember, I, I couldn't even hear I am a motivational speaker and couldn't motivate myself. I mean, that's a whole nother story. But I asked the doctor of the show, I said, listen, doc, 
can you motivate me to lose 100 pounds? Because I was thinking, yeah, I was well over 100. But I'm like, if I could get this first 100, he said, nope, I can't motivate you. I'm like, well, what am I here for? He said, here's, here's the problem. You're looking at it, the goal in its entirety, and it's overwhelming. Right. He said, you're talking about 100 pounds. He said, let's do this. He said, I, I can't motivate you to lose 100 pounds, but I can't motivate you to lose 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 times. Yeah. That changed my life. And I say that because I begin to look at everything I do in life just like that. Because the 10 pounds, what did it do? It fueled me to lose 10 more pounds. Right. And 10 more pounds. Mm -hmm. And I looked up and, and boom, I was 100 pounds eventually. Nice. So that's what it was. Nice. So that's why what you said was it right. made so much sense. And anybody listening out there, it's not that we want you, like he said, Coach said, we, don't, we want you to have a big goal. Right. But, hey... I, and I get you want to run a marathon, right? But let's walk on the treadmill first. Yeah, first, you know what I'm saying? Let's, <laughs> we got to go to a mile before we do 24, <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? So, no, nah, that's good. Now, that was too big. What about the other two that you said? Let's let's deal with those two quickly. Well, uh, too many. I mean, you know, if, right? You too know, many. Yeah, that's another. Too, one. too many. You know, you you're all over the place. Right. You know, you're all over the place. You got to take a direct line, and like you said, like you know, when 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 you're thinking about too many, like people come to me and they bring their goals to me because when when we're on our 90 day challenge and stuff like that, and we send out these goals, we say, hey, write your goals, bring them back in, let me look at them, and we got to get them in line. And a lot of people write down a bunch of goals, and a lot of them they're um they're kind Kind of interrelated or some of them are not related and and what i learned ken man is you got to use the 2080 rule with all this stuff because when you look at your goals and you break them down the right 20 percent can take care of the other 80 percent of the results so some people you know they, they want to um they want to uh, learn how to do this or they want to go back to school to do this or they want to do something with their finances and if they start on this one thing it'll take care of all three of those if, if they just get the ball rolling in one instead of trying to go in three different directions. You go in the right direction at one time and you can kill two and three birds with one stone. So the 2080 rule is basically, you know, it was it was it was founded in economics, but it can be applied to anything because it's a principle and everything on the universe is governed by laws and principles. So if, if you just take the right 20%, if you plant 20% of the seed, right, then it's going to sprout up and take care of 80, 80%. the rest of the 80% of the garden. That's good. Right. That's right. good stuff right, right. there. Without question. Wow. And it's kind of like this. And I've told you this before. The sun has more energy. It could kill us all. Mm -hmm. But the sun's energy is dispersed, mm -hmm. okay? So it doesn't kill us, right. okay? However, if you take a laser beam, yeah, yeah. and that laser beam is pointed yeah. directly at your chest, right. it would kill you instantly because that focused energy, focused energy is so powerful. So everybody out there, you know, you got all these different goals. Taylor, you know, I'm going to ask you something. You're all quiet. You got a whole bunch of different goals for this year or just a couple or what? I have a couple. I have a couple. Mine are dealing with student loans, though, and other debt. <laughs> yeah, so, that's real. Well, that's, that's real. That's but, real. You know, I want to give y'all some real stuff, man. <laughs> Yesterday, you know, I came home and I had a letter in the mail, and it said, um, it, "It said um, complete. It, it said that the debt was complete." Uh, it was my student loan um, thing, and I no longer have the debt. Um, wow. The loan. It's completed. I had a great I want you, It was a great feeling because this loan was taken out in 1993. Whew. All right, so, you know. It, wow. It's a wow, I was born. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you try to tell the people how old I am. I'm still young. Uh, I'm uh, hey, yo, <laughs> that's like a mortgage. You know what I mean? God, yo, without question, man, but you know, that, that, that focus energy that you said, you know, I got focused with gazelle intensity. Right. You know, you know gazelle's a very fast animal, uh, yes. especially when they got to run from lions. Gazelle uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got focused with gazelle intensity, and I said, I got to knock this out. It wasn't that much left, but that was one of the ones that, that, that Dave Ramsey helped me, you know, he put the fire to me and said, yo, go knock that one out. It wasn't that much left. Get it out the way. And that was one of those small goals that I, I just knocked it out. And now that's good. The next one, man. Man, that's, that's good. Taylor, hope yeah. for you, baby. Hope for you. I got hey, it. That's right. I, that's I a, got it. All right, <laughs> the last one, Coach, and we'll get to this letter that we received. And I want I want to get your opinion on it. What was the last one? It was too broad, too, too big, mm -hmm. and too many. So broad mm -hmm. is more or less, it's 
it broadens the sense. Right. right. Okay. Specific. Right. We talked about that. So when you're setting goals, you want to set smart goals because you want them to be specific. You want them to be measurable. You want them to be um, attainable. Right. You want them to be relevant. You know, and you want it to be in a time frame or time based or time bound. Okay, right. so you know you got to have the smart principle in mind when you're talking about goals. That won't leave it all the way out, all over the space and out of the place. Um, let's let's you want you want to get into the all right. So into, okay, let's let's get into some food for thought. All right now, well, well we got a letter first. We got a let I got a letter from um, one of our fans, and they want you, they want our advice. So I wanted to see what you thought about it. All right, you ready? Uh, you I ready? Thought, I thought you. I thought. Um, uh, I thought Taylor was going to read the letter. What, what are you Taylor, here for? No, you just no, here to just listen. No, hold on. What are you here to no, for? Taylor got all the questions. You want to read the letter? I can read the letter. Let Taylor read the letter, read the letter and the letter. questions. <laughs> all right, read the letter. All right, all right, all right. Read the letter. Letters from the street. <laughs> <laughs> from the street, baby. From the street. Well, the reason why the letters from the street is because we want to leave the, uh, the, the, the author of the letter anonymous. So, you know, we just go call it from the street. Because straight right. up, we're going to get down and dirty. All right, bet. Dear Ken and Lynch, I am writing this letter because I have fallen off the wagon. Last year, I had lost 30 pounds, and I was feeling good about myself. Congratulations. Then I started putting the needs of others before, me, before my own, my children, grandchildren, and parents. I had to do it because they needed me. In the process, I stopped. Working out, eating, mm-hmm. eat, working out, eating right, and doing other things for me. I have gained back what I, it, during this time, I have gained back what I lost and more. Mm-hmm. I am ashamed and I feel a sense of guilt. I just want to know how do I get back on track? You don't have to say her name though. Yeah, I ain't gonna say oh, her yeah, name. See, I pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. For wow. Me. You want me to start or you yeah, start? go ahead and start off, kid, man. Let's talk to the lady, man. All right, so first of and, all. And not just her, though, because there's other people yeah, out there I'm in sure the same predicament. So this is going to help a lot of people. Right I here. mean, a lot of us are caretakers out there. A lot of us, we feel good about ourselves when we take care of others. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's good. Uh, I often say this. I said, you have to love yourself more than you love everybody else. And that's the honest truth. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. But if you can't, don't love yourself, you cannot love other people yeah. effectively. All right. And so what I'm saying is you got to love yourself enough to want to take care of yourself. Because what happens is when your health fades? Now you can't take care of anybody. Or, or, all right. Yeah. So, I mean, yo, I always say this, man. This is what you need to take away from this is I always say the, the first rule of, of life is First rule of survival is self self preservation. It is the first rule of survival. Right. Now, some people might say, "Well, you know, Christ laid down His life for us, and all of that." And I get that. You should give better to give than receive. I got all of that. Yeah. But we have to understand that that this gift God gave us, this life, this one life. And I've heard you say this: oh, yeah. this one life. Our gift to Him is what we do with it. Right. Now, are we? Now, think about this. And I'm gonna get real deep, and some of y'all might not agree with me. But if you take care of other people and neglect the life that He gave you, yeah, yeah. okay. You, I actually believe that what happens is you do him a disservice. And then also, it almost becomes like you spit in God's face, even though you're helping other people. But a lot of times, though, Taylor, people help other people. You know why? Because they don't want to face their own life. They don't want to look at their own life. They don't want to look at the inefficiency in their own life. They don't want to say, you know what, here's where I am. And sometimes looking at yourself hurts. I've had to do that many times. Probably last week I had to do it when I thought about the, the holidays. But I'm just saying, though. So what I would first say to this particular person is this. Number one, you're, you are as important or more important than anybody else. Okay, and you've got to love yourself to enough to say I've got to take care of myself. That's the first thing, right? That, you know, so, that's the first thing I would say. Yeah, and and you know the next thing, um, Ken, that I think we need to to point out about that um, is that you know you you've interrupted your normal pattern, and you know we we basically have to get back into another pattern. Right. So. You know, this is conditioning that that's happened and she just has to break that cycle somewhere someday and just just say, I'm going to do one thing different today. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, she stopped eating right. And, you know, she, she's not working out anymore. Let's yeah. just say I'm going to the gym today. 
you know, and I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to order a salad, you know, this time. And then it'll trickle back over so that you can jump back on the wagon, you know. And for the listeners, you know, I just want to say that whenever you, you fall off the wagon, just just get back on. It's going to happen to all of us. Life happens, you know, and we, we, we understand that. But just get back on. But if you had a community like we have, <laughs> people reach out and they'll grab you and they'll pull you back in. So we got accountability partners and things like that. Let me just tell you one thing real quick. And this is this girl, I can't name no names, but I'm teaching class 5.30 in the morning and her name was on my heart and her face was, it was on my heart and I, and I seen her and I was like, where is such and such at? And then, I, I, you know, where the gym, gym is located, I was like, don't she live, like, right over there? So I'm doing the warm-up, and you know I got 20 seconds in all the exercises and 10 seconds. Of it. So in the middle of me doing all the warm-up, it's 5.30 in the morning, right? Right. I pull out my phone, and I call her. What? She, she didn't answer the phone. <laughs> she didn't answer the phone, but, you know, oh, I haven't seen her in two months. About a month and a half, maybe two months, and I left her a message. You know, the class is like, is he really calling her right now? Like, I'm calling her in the middle while I'm doing a warm-up, and I'm leaving a message so wow. that everybody in the class hears me. But here's the, here's the kicker about what happened. Guess what? What? She came to class today. And that was on, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday that I made the call, and here she is on Thursday, came to class. So That's good. it was just accountability wow. from having that community around. So when you have that accountability partner, it's a little bit easier to get back on the wagon. So, you know, make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right kind of people that are going to check you and they're going to say, yo, you know what? You, you're falling off a little bit. Because, you know, I call you a bit. Why don't you, you say how you really say it? I mean, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you try to get this on iTunes and SoundCloud. <laughs> you know, you know, I got my pastor <laughs> listening, man. Shout out to Pastor Pierce, man. I ain't going to drop no bombs right now, man. You know? All right. Well, but, we won't do it. We won't do it. <laughs> Let me leave it with one, one last thing. I yes. leave it with one last thing. Yes, sir. Is this right here. Remember this, that obviously you don't feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Remember these three words. Motion creates emotion. Mm -hmm. All right. And what that basically is. is I this. think that's in my book, Ken. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's in your book. Okay. All right. It's in your book. So I feel like, you know. Hold up. Shameless plug. Seven levels of this. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yo, check Coach Lynch's book out. Seven levels of discipline. The man has to okay, back to the letter. Back to the letter. All right. <laughs> motion creates emotion. The more you do something, the more you feel like doing it later. A lot of times what the problem is, is that people want to feel like doing it before they actually do it. That's true. All right. So what I tell them is, if you want to do, just do it first. Push through it. Right. Just push through it. Eventually, the mind will take a picture of you doing it. That's how, that's part of conditioning. The mind thinks in pictures. The more you do it, the more you will want to do it later right. on. Right. But the emotions come after the motion. That's good stuff. All right? That's good All right. Stuff. So, hey, Speaking of the thing we're doing, man, let's tell everybody about the challenge. Y'all, right. we're doing a challenge. Go ahead and give, tell them about the challenge. All right, so we got the 90-day challenge going on, man. Listen, I'm telling you, if you're looking to transform your body and change your life, you know, change the mind, the way you think, because, you know, true transformation doesn't happen without renewal of the mind, then you need to check out our 90-day challenge. Our 90-day challenge is something special because we tackle every single angle that, 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 that actually causes you to change. So, you know, we talk about mental, we talk about spiritual, we talk about emotional. You know, we even got educational stuff. We got supplemental tips, su supplement tips. We got everything that you could possibly need on this journey. Not to just, you know, just to lose a little weight, but to transform and change your life. Wow. Yeah. That's like, hey, hey, that was kind of slick, man. Yeah, yeah. You, like, don't like sales and stuff, but you sounded like... <laughs> Like, you know, like, nah, you, like, you know like a I mean, salesman. You know, at the end what of the day, you, you do have to sell, but I build value, man. And I build value by delivering more service than people expect. You do. So, you know, um, you know, you a lot of people, man, sometimes, like, they come to the gym, man, I train them for free. It don't even matter. You know, I look out for them, but at the end of the day, they're going to be like, man, I can't believe he just gave me that kind of service for nothing. And then they ask me, like, yo, you know. Yeah, two months later, like how much does it cost for me to train with you for three months or something like that? That's just, you know, that's good. Yeah. Let me tell you how to how to get the ninety day challenge. What we want you to do is go to our website www dot i am results results with the z dot com. That's www dot i am results. The results that the z at the end of results no s dot com click on the 90 day challenge and it'll take you right through the process and you know what we don't care where you are puerto rico maine puerto rico amsterdam oh, puerto rico. 
go. I don't care where you are, but you can get this 90 day challenge and we will transform your life. Hey, hey, real quick, I just want to make sure y'all know that there's three W's because that dude said about six W's. Right. right there. He was like, and w, right. W, and then he w, said, W, 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 <laughs> <Dot. W, dot. laughs> <laughs> All right, kid, man. Let's go on, man. We, we, we got uh, to get to this final thought, man. Uh, yeah, well, like... Final thought? We got a question of the day first. We did a question of the day. What are no, you that was the letter, letter from the street. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm all yeah, over the place. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, all right. I mean, this dude. Get with it. Get with uh, it. Uh, I just give a skip. What, 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 I'll what, give what, you what? one question. I'll give you one question. So, I got one question from the street, and they're saying, I see people doing cardio stuff. When I go in the gym, my friends, I don't know who said, who wrote this, but uh, my friends tell me that should, that I should do cardio until I lose 25 to 30 pounds, then do some strength training to tone up. Is this correct? Well, let me tell you what's correct. All right. Tell First me. and foremost, they need new friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, no, God. with friends like that, who needs enemies, man? Come right. on, man. But, they, but I've heard that too, That's though, man. Right. I heard right, it let me fix it. Right, let me fix, fix it, it, man. Fix Jesus it. Christ. All right, look. On your body. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. All right, so anyway, look. Check this out. On your body, all you have is fat and muscle. Fat and muscle. Fat and muscle. I'm going to say it again. Say it with me. On your body, all you have yeah. is fat, fat and muscle. muscle. Fat, fat and muscle. muscle. All right. Now, look. If you don't want fat anymore, that means you're going to want muscle. I'm going to say this again. If you don't want fat anymore, that means you want muscle. Right. You got to say it with me. If you don't want well, fat, fat anymore, anymore you, you want muscle. muscle. All right. Now, guess what? You can't gain muscle by running. All right, you'll lose a little bit of water and things like that, but you have to work out your body and you have to work resistance. You have to use weights. You have to use your body weight. You have to actually do things that build lean muscle and break it down. So you break it down during exercise and you build it with the diet. All right, you have to do some type of training outside of running. Now add the running in because it's going to be a great way to tone and sculpt, you know, those, those muscles that you're building, you know, with your resistance training. And then, and then doing strength training has a high metabolic rate. Burns right. more calories over burn time. more calories uh, for a longer period of time. Right. So, you know, two, 24, 48 hours later, like the way we design programs, is you'll still be burning calories a day or two later. So whoever asked that question, look, don't just get on the trip. You know what, though? I've seen people on the treadmill. Their body don't change. They've been like a year or something. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. yo, they look the same. Oh, yeah, without question. So... All right, that's your answer for today. We don't have time for two questions. We're just going to do one. Yeah, because right. Ken said all them W's, so we're running behind. All right, so we got the <laughs> final, final thoughts. The final thoughts for this resolution. Why resolutions don't work, okay? Now, we didn't really talk about We just talked about how to make them work, why they don't work. Uh, yeah, 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 but what's yeah. your, I, I guess, I'll let you go first. All right, well, first of all, I have to throw this in there real quick because um, we, we didn't touch on it, but... Uh, they, you, everybody has to keep in mind that 92% of New Year's resolutions end in failure. All right? Now, most, they, 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 most of that stuff is just unrealistic. All right? You know, the, the first thing that you want to do is try to come, become a better person. All right? In order to become a better person, you actually have to, you know, start being that person. A lot of people want to, to do and... and and, and not, a lot of people want to have. They want to have something and they don't want to do something. So in order for you to actually become something, you have to do it. So I want you to understand this. Just, just think about it. If, if I want to look like the person that has the ripped abs or the toned body, then think about what that person would order when they go to the restaurant. Think about what that person would buy um, for the week or, um, with their food. And that's how you actually become something before you actually, you know, are it. You, you understand what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Now, you become it. That's, that's kind of slick right there. I like that. Taylor, you got anything you want to say on the final thoughts? I know you don't talk much. No, y'all go ahead. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. I got something. Okay. Yeah. So I was reading something by this psychology professor. His name is Peter Herman. And he said one of the reasons why people don't don't follow through with their New Year's resolutions is what, something he called false false hope syndrome. Mm -hmm. And what he said basically means that their resolution is significantly unrealistic and out of alignment with their internal view of themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's almost like if I say I'm going to do this, but deep inside, I don't really view myself that way. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I create excuses and things. So when it doesn't pan out, 
So what he suggests, and yes. what he suggests is this: is instead of making New Year's resolutions so much, begin to work on yourself. Beginning by educating yourself, doing affirmations, focus on making you better, and then what will happen? It will become in alignment with the things that you truly want. Well, what the hell is his name? Oh, his name is Peter Herman. Well, that's what I said. Well, I said I mean, you got to become a better person. Then you can come back on me with Peter Herman. I don't even know Peter. <laughs> who, 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 who is Pee Wee Herman? Pee Wee Herman? You talking about... Hey, look. Listen, man, hey, just... Uh, all, all, I, all I want to tell the people is that, you know, if, if they make small incremental lifestyle changes, man, is it might feel less sexy when you're doing small things like that, but you know, you have a much greater chance of creating real change when you do small things. So, you know, just a little bit and, and you can keep that in your lifestyle, man. It's so, a wrap. Just a stop. little bit. Just a little just bit. Just a little bit. That's like a song, oh, right? Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I mean, even going to say that. Hey, y'all know I'm a rapper. I'm, I'm, I'm the rapper. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm an aspiring want to be rapper. So, you know, maybe they're not. Like, you keep on hey, look, You keep on wanting. Check us out next week, y'all. Check us out next week, man. Mind Over Matter Mondays. We here, man. Team results, the school of results, whatever it is. Results are the only thing that matters. All right? Y'all can have excuses. You can have results. But at the end of the day, results are the only thing that matters. Only we'll thing. catch y'all on the next one. Peace! <laughs> mind, mind, mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You got to go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear.